And this is something that we often hear from organizations, especially ones if your organization's a registered charity, but also from others who, yeah, they want to be nonpartisan, they don't want to affiliate with anyone directly, they want to be unbiased, and there are a lot of gray areas. What do you think being nonpartisan means? Does anybody have any ideas what it means? I looked it up online, actually on the dictionary, and the very first thing that comes up on dictionary.com it says, yeah, free from party affiliation. It seems pretty obvious. It also talked about not any political activity. And when I talk about political activity, I mean activity on behalf of a candidate or a political party. So it, even though nonpartisan implies party, we also take that to mean individual candidates. Because we do have candidates that may not be aligned with a particular political party. Um, and at the bottom, I've said there as well, no political bias. But there is another component to being nonpartisan that I always find the most interesting, and this is where we get into the meaty part of the conversation. Being nonpartisan includes issues associated with a candidate or a party platform. So what does that mean? So if I were to say to you something like, well, I'm being nonpartisan because I'm not supporting any particular party or any particular candidate, but I think it's really important that we vote because we have to stop Enbridge. Does that sound like that might be an issue associated with a particular candidate or a party platform? I'm seeing some heads nodding. Some people aren't quite sure. So I think maybe that's because if I were to ask you, well, which party do you think that's associated with, we would have as many different answers as there are people in this room. Because it, there's not a direct line between that particular issue and one particular or a particular party, but certainly it might evoke some feelings or some kind of response of association in us when we start talking about those kinds of issues. So this is where I think we need to start framing our discussion today is about this idea about issues and about associating issues or associating ideas with a particular party or candidate. And that is part of what being about what makes being nonpartisan so complex. When I talk about perception being everything, this is where I get the majority of questions. Nobody comes to me with questions being like, you know, is it partisan if I'm friends with this candidate or is it partisan if I support this political party? Because I think we all get that. We all understand that. But I get all the questions about perception. Is it okay if I have a town councillor working for me at a voting place? Or is it okay if I hire this guy who wrote a letter to the editor and he's going to be working in my office and, and we're running an election? Those are the questions that I get asked. Where it's not really black and white, it's gray. And I, I'm really comfortable in the gray. I work in HR, so I deal with mostly things that are gray. But for those of us who like the black and white, this is not going to be a comfortable area to work in. Because we're talking about perceptions of bias or perceptions of aff affiliation. And we have to recognize that these perceptions are just as important as actual activity. Because it's how we represent ourselves in the community and how we represent ourselves to the voters and citizens of BC that's as important as the things that we actually do. And that's why you'll see on the bottom of all our little slides, it says that we're a nonpartisan office of the legislature because we have to remind ourselves every single time to every single new person we encounter or people who've dealt with us before that this is fundamental to what we do. It's in our name. It's, in, it's part of who we are, that we are nonpartisan. And that doesn't just mean that we don't support candidates and political parties, but also that we have this reputation of being nonpartisan. And that's really, really important. But it's, been, it's difficult for us as a nonpartisan organization to cut directly to what makes people vote, as, as Bernard was saying, in a way that doesn't make us appear like we're using the platform of a political party or candidate to motivate people or demotivate people. So that's a challenge. That's, that is the question. I think that's a really good question. And, and this is why we're looking, I think, for your partnership in this, because we need to find ways that will get, motivate people to vote. Um, in a way that doesn't compromise our ability to be neutral. We're just going to look at a couple of messages and we'll show them to you. It's something that, you know, someone could use for an election campaign that's oriented towards youth. And for each of them, we'll start with just a show of hands of whether or not everyone thinks it's nonpartisan. Okay. So your vote is your voice. So it's by show of hands, who, think that, who thinks that passes the nonpartisan test? I'd say that one's pretty obvious and we all agree. It's yeah. pretty neutral. It doesn't appear to promote or oppose a candidate or a political party. In fact, or, I stole it from the city of Toronto, <laughs> so they've used it before. Nice. Your vote is your voice. Vote to protect BC's environment is kind of the second part. So who thinks that one 
passes the nonpartisanship test by show of hands. Oh, wow, this is a good group. <laughs> okay. Um, who said that? Yeah. I think it should. Yeah. Well, and that goes along with what I was saying about perception, is that maybe we wish it did, but the issue is how would it be received by others if they were to see that as your message or our message? Challenge around that one is just that it is singling out one specific issue, and it's saying how you should be voting or what you should be voting for. So it's very much saying your vote is your voice, and this is where your voice should be directed. Mm -hmm. And we're starting with the easier ones. They'll get a little more <laughs> ambiguous. Uh, this election support affordable education in BC. Um, we'll try the show of hands again, but like I said, this is the easy slide. Does anyone, does anyone think this passes the nonpartisanship test? Yeah, I think this one is a really good example of clear <coughs> issue advocacy. So it's picking a particular issue, which is in BC quite political. Mm -hmm. Change the world, use your vote. So who thinks that this one passes the test? I see some hands that are not raised. Does anyone, yeah, does anyone disagree? Does anyone think this one is? So because it's sort of not the status quo is the yeah. take on it. Yeah, that, I think that, that's interesting because we sort of said, well, this might be okay, but you're right. It, by saying change, using the word change, that implies that something has to change. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's definitely a little mm -hmm. bit of there's ambiguity. There's some overtones. <laughs> yeah, there are overtones to this one, but I mean, I would say it's probably more towards the safe zone. But it's hard to say. I mean, we look at the room. I'd say 90% of people thought it was okay, but there is 10% maybe who thought that maybe this wasn't I know, as nonpartisan a message. So again, it's about that perception, right? We don't all perceive things equally. Mm -hmm. Here's you, another one. You anticipated <laughs> us a bit on that one. How's, how about that one? So does anyone think this passes the test? I'm going to assume probably not. No hands go up. <laughs> so yeah, and that's something where, yeah, change can potentially be a loaded word depending on how you put it in there. And, you know, some people might think the argument that change the world is something a bit broader, whereas vote for change is a little more pointed. Mm -hmm. But that's sort of the piece to be conscious around. And the last one. So this one, you know, reason number 173 to vote this election, your grandparents' retirement. So does anyone think that this one would pass the nonpartisanship test? Fails the clarity test. Fails the Fails clarity, the clarity test. test, okay. <laughs> Well, we're not advocating for you to use any of these slogans. We're just using them as Give examples. them as examples. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I think there's some conflicting interpretations. This could be perceived as fairly neutral, but it could also invoke some sort of a response in terms of advocacy one way or another. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. the one that we sort of put in there because it's something that really depends on the context. So, right. is retirement something that's being discussed as an issue? Is it associated with one particular group in the election? Or is this just more of an appeal to family or things that matter to you. Mm -hmm. Everything that we do, we try to serve everybody equally. So we have a, a value uh, as, that we have as part of our fabric of our organization, part of our culture of equal service to everyone. So regardless of which party you represent, which candidate you, re you represent, what type of voter you are, what, whatever background you come from, it doesn't matter to us that we are, provide an accessible electoral process and that we serve all candidates and political parties and, and voters equally. Um, regardless of what they're bringing to the table, right? So um, that's really important for us. Um, and another way that we, we do that is also by trying to be a conduit between you as voters and the political parties and candidates by, you know, this thing, for example, of putting access to their information by going to our website, there's a link to it. So trying to, to be that link without um, being that link for any one person or any one party. Um, to provide that equal opportunity for all.